Hey everybody, Kyle Abbott, Abachido. I assume we're getting good sound, <clears throat> or at least a sound. Uh, let me know if the shamisen or the voice should be up or down. No one's watching at this point, so by the time you're watching this particular segment, it's going to be too late. But you can still let me know. <clears throat> so it's been two weeks since we've done a live. Uh, Mike had our last one. Mike Penny was here in the studio, did some great um, sweeps and chop building, chop builders, different cool things. Then I picked up a cold. Ooh, full volume. Oopsie daisy, sorry, Ben. <clears throat> um, then I picked up a cold from Mike, no less. Uh, don't say he never brings uh, omiyage uh, gifties, because he does. <clears throat> oh, he also brought tequila, but that's another story. Uh, yeah, so <clears throat> we're back here in the studio, Bachido Studios. Welcome, all of you out there. Uh, let's see. Any news? Today, we're going to announce the winner of today's, of this month's, or whatever, uh, Shamisen Live contest. So those who don't know, um, what was it, two months ago or so, or a month ago, I had a, announced a little contest where... Participants play a drill, song, phrase, whatever they learned from um, one of the previous live, Shamisen Lives. And to the winner, I will bestow upon them some Bachido swag, an embroidered Bachido patch with bonus iron-on uh, capabilities if you want to do so, or stitching. Uh, two Bachido stickers and a Bachido button as well as a copy of my newest solo album, Frosty, A Retrospective Christmas. This features, of course, Kevin Metz, Mike Penny, Negan Fuji, uh, Masahiro Nita, um, Carl Young, plenty of amazing players. Uh, so uh, I am going to announce the winner, as well as offer some friendly feedback and constructive... Uh, I'm going to say constructive criticism, but criticism in itself doesn't sound like a nice word. Uh, commentary? Comments. Let's say comments. Some constructive comments for everybody. <clears throat> oh, hey, uh, Rachel. Glad you're good, except for your voice. Uh, oi, it's cold there. It's been warm here. You should come down to California. It's good weather all around, but I'm sure you're used to the heat. Uh, okay, okay. Cool stuff, cool stuff. Uh, shall we just start off? Shall we kick it off uh, with the winner? <clears throat> Sound good? Sound good. Alrighty then. The winner of this first Shamisen Live contest is none other than Miss Ginger Fox. Yay! <clears throat> good job, Miss Ginger Fox. Uh, Rachel. Uh, of course, everybody did a wonderful job, I thought, on everyone's entry. Uh, and somehow, Rachel just stuck out at me. I really, really enjoyed the, the, the whole shebang, as it were. Uh, so, congratulations, Rachel, this, uh, for winning this month's uh, Shamisen Live contest. And those, ev everyone else, do not fear. Maybe next week or tomorrow... Thursday, uh, day after tomorrow, we'll have another Shamisen Live contest, and we'll do the whole thing again. <clears throat> but yes, do the whole thing again. Uh, cool. So, uh, yes, yes way, seriously, holy guacamole is right. <clears throat> uh, so, let's, um, I'm going to share some feedback based on everyone's entries. For me, oh, did I thank you all yet? Thank you all so much for participating in the contest and making the video entries. Outside of just you know, having a fun thing to do to kind of get the community, you know, those watching here, kind of going and so we can kind of see each other what we're doing, it's also very helpful, very helpful for me in making these lives <clears throat> because I know I have a sense of where you all are at, you know, skill level, and otherwise. And that's going to be great going forward in terms of creating co uh, content for everyone 
for all of you. Um, and I would like to be able to uh, offer some feedback and such. So you, you can all uh, improve. Not that you won't improve without feedback, of course, but, um, you know, be aware of things to uh, watch out for and whatnot. So I think as we continue doing this, have a live contest and then uh, video submissions kind of back and forth, that'll be fun to see if you guys, um, if your technique changes or improves or what, whatever you'd like to call it. Yeah, so this is going to be a very good thing. And lots of free goodies for everybody. So who doesn't enjoy that? I know I do. Enjoy it. All right. <clears throat> um, yes, my advice, buy my book. Oh, I see, Ben. Oh, yes, Lucas. <clears throat> Nuts, I wish I had a book here. Um, I don't have a book here. But Mr. Lucas, uh, building a shamisen... Um, go to Amazon.com or Bachido.com or just type in Shamisen of Japan book into Google. I have a whole book with step-by-step -step instructions as well as templates that you can cut out and trace onto the wood. Uh, it's very easy. A very um, nice way, easy way to build a Shamisen. I wish I had a book like that when I was first making mine. Uh, okay, <clears throat> so let's start with uh, the winner herself. Feedback-wise, uh, Rachel, Let's see, I took notes, so I wouldn't be going, uh, 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 can you guess what your feedback might be? Uh, excellent question to you. Okay, I got it. So this applies to a few people, actually. Maybe I should just lump people together. Would that be a good idea? Oh, yes. Here we go. I got it. I got it. Don't worry, everybody. I got it. <coughs> So we're in uh, Niagari, key of C. Um, okay, so two things, uh, Rachel. First of all, wonderful. You know, this is my first time hearing you. I was very impressed uh, and delighted with what I heard. Um, and here are some things that might uh, be cool to know going forward, which might help, which might uh, lead to greater, faster improvements very soon. <clears throat> so first off, two things. One, we'll start with the left hand. Um, I think I noticed, I'm not quite sure, but it seemed like the knuckles were below the saw, only by a slight bit. Maybe, maybe not. Let's go to Dokan and move to the saw. <clears throat> so... It's, this is what it seemed like you were doing, I think. Um, though there's nothing <clears throat> inherently wrong with that, like around here, <clears throat> overall you'll find it much more beneficial to, to have the knuckles above the edge of the saw. When it's that way, uh, you know, as you speed up or move to different notes and such, you'll find keeping everything on this plane uh, <clears throat> is much easier or Okay, putting it another way, I didn't rehearse. Uh, when the knuckles are below, your the flesh of your finger is touching, and then sliding up with the flesh of your finger on the saw is a bit harder uh, because you got the friction of the finger on the saw. By turning up, you have less surface area of your finger on the saw. Ideally, it'll be your fingernail, and that will allow you to move much faster and more smoothly, easily. And the less effort is better in this case. <clears throat> Think that makes sense? Oops. 
And that's across the board with not just uh, this hajiki technique. Um, keeping your fingers up will make it easier to do. Make it easier to move across different strings. <clears throat> it's like in martial arts, you know, like uh, stances, as it were. Thinking of your finger as stances on the fingerboard. Um, you know, these are your feet. You want to have them up. And when they're up and ready, you can move. Uh, this would be the equivalent of lying down, as it were, I would, I would say. Uh, so, yeah, up, attention, and ready. Okay, so that's that for a personal cam. Oopsie daisy. That's not the personal cam, that's the dough cam. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, all right. Uh, okay. Got you live on to ask. Okay. Uh, so, everyone, soak that in for a moment, and I'll quickly read the comments. <clears throat> Um, Lucas, excellent. Uh, uh, CJ Malaco, since we've got you live, I want to ask you whether or not you need to modify the shabal for Sawari sound. No hurry. That's a good uh, question. Um, yes, this doesn't have a... <clears throat> this doesn't innately have a Sawari effect. You could try if you want. Uh, let's look here for a moment. Um, so, uh, okay, comparing. Here is <clears throat> the Sawari part here. Um, we have, even without this Azoma Zawari, the uh, mechanical device that allows us to kind of adjust it, if it was just uh, the regular, just against the wood, The place where the Ichinomoto rests on the wood is, I think, slightly lower than this uh, surface here, the flat part here. And then it will touch this ridge right here. Um, and there's this kind of groove, as you can see, I think, at the valley kind of in the middle right here to ensure that the string will just touch this edge right there. Now for the <clears throat> the shovel, there is no valley, and I do believe that the uh, the wood it's all on the same level. This isn't lower or higher. What could you do to make a sawari thing? Well, one thing would be you could make. Put a strip of I don't know a strip of brass metal like a millimeter a millimeter or half a millimeter it doesn't even have to be brass it could just be a thin strip of wood right there <clears throat> they will put a piece they put on glue along this edge just to make sure just to uh, help fortify uh, this so uh, the strings don't dig into the wood but that's not enough to really lift the strings much. So you can scrape away this glue, put on a half millimeter to a millimeter thick piece of metal or wood, and that should be enough to raise the strings a bit. And then, like the beginner shamisen, put a piece of tape kind of under here. And that should be enough to get a sawari buzz going. Great question. I haven't thought of that. Um, Carl, yes, winner was announced. It was you. Oh, but you weren't here to receive the prize and accept it, so we had to uh, burn it. 
right. Um, okay, no, but uh, Rachel, Rachel Hicks, uh, Mrs. Ginger Fox in Australia was the winner. So, yay. Yay, Rachel. <clears throat> okay, so that was about, <clears throat> excuse me, that was about the Sawadee. Uh, okay, now, let's move on to Rachel's right hand technique. This also applies to Ben. <clears throat> Excuse me. Quick note about my cough. I wasn't coughing at all up until the live started, so maybe it's a psychological thing. Hopefully we're going in a good direction. Okay, so right-handed technique. Uh, great entry, Ben. Um, and of course, great entry, Rachel. Now I'm going to discuss your bachi. So what I see from both of you is the main thing your th your thumb is on the side like this i do believe more or less maybe even more so that is how it is um, and I notice when it's held here the plucking motion is more like a guitar where it's or I mean like like a plectrum this kind of thing kind of plucking away however we don't want to do that with our bachi instead our thumb is best when it's not on the side but rather on the top. Does that make sense? Uh, almost perpendicular, quite perpendicular uh, to the bachi. And when it's that way, our energy transfer is more efficient. This was, I think, what you guys are doing. This is a bit more ideal, I would say. <clears throat> and then, when it's like this, you should feel that the bachi is not going to the side or going out, but rather in, like into your chest or stomach. Um, so for a moment, if we take our bachi away, we see our thumb. <clears throat> We want to press down on the skin with the thumb flat on the skin and feel that the thumb is going to push into our tummy. Oops. Note, not a lot of force or a lot of strength because we're not intending to actually break through the skin, but it should help us put just a little extra strength, just a tiny bit extra extra power in like the final uh, final motion uh, and I'll explain that more in a moment <clears throat> but so we're feeling this going down into the skin now we pick up our bachi and do the same thing just like before thumb is going flat on more or less flat and no not not in 100% flat because our bachi sh still should be angled. But that gets you in the general ballpark. Okay, questions. 
good stuff. Um, um, let's see. Ginger Fox, I've been trying to study the bocce technique based on your book and videos since as I feel mine isn't relaxed as it should be. Um, it's hard to tell because your hand in itself looks relaxed as you're doing it. Um, just a matter, currently as a matter of the positioning. Um, if you just change this to here, or the thumb specifically, uh, to you know, above, See how that go, goes. And hopefully it should look as relaxed, because to me it looked, it looked fun. I mean, it looked relaxed. Who knows? Um, you know, what am I saying? Um, Sam Pepper, random question. Rachel, but was that tree behind you uh, in the video, a wattle tree? I believe it's a jacaranda tree. Hey, we've got a jacaranda, we've got two jacarandas uh, in our backyard, or kind of in the area. Cool stuff. Another reason to come to California, Rachel, or for a visit at least. Uh, okay, blah, 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 blah. Um. <clears throat> ben Allen, one of my biggest problems at the moment is my pinky, I think I'm putting in the wrong place. That's a good, interesting observation. Um, let's go back to Dokan. So <clears throat> this depends actually or like the exact placement differs from player to player, I find. For example, uh, Nitaru, or at least Masahiro Nita and his father, or at least Masahiro Nita, he puts, he really juts his uh, pinky to the side, like so. And that also perhaps works for best for his hand, because everyone's hand is a bit different. Um, and that's how he plays like this. <laughs> I will say that takes a that will take a while to get fully comfortable with, um, and then you have players like Reagan and such who have their pinky much more down, like so, not out here, but like this, and their technique is really awesome. His technique is really awesome too. <laughs> I just realized as I uh, did the tatakibachi right now, um, your pinky will actually, maybe don't worry about it so much. It'll naturally be where it needs to be as you strike to provide stability, I think. Because I, I started out here just now. And it just kind of naturally went where it was most comfortable, I guess. Maybe that'll take a while as well to find out. But long story short, really, if if you have your thumb, the thumb is the focus. So if you have your thumb in the proper place, I think most everything else will kind of fall where it needs to be. Um, thumb on top right here and rather straight. Like so. Not like this, but. Awesome. Um, glad the thumb is making a difference already. Um, da, 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 da. Carl, uh, it usually helps to think of it as moving the bachi towards your stomach instead of your crotch. When comparing the two, you notice that if you imagine the full... When comparing the two, you notice that if you imagine the full motion of the thumb moves... Yes. Um, I'll wait till 
He checks the grammar on that. Um, okay. <clears throat> oh, Johnny Pete's. Which my decorative accessory on my middle finger or the yubikake? Uh, if it's the decorative accessory, let's take a look. So this morning, um, I was cutting a piece of a metal rod to put in the nakago, this spike here. <clears throat> and this is something very new, just an idea from Reagan. Um, basically, he thinks that if the uh, kind of as much metal <laughs> as possible is in the inside, like in, inside the sol, a truss rod, and inside the nakago, the spike going through here, it helps with the vibrations. Personally, I think it's, because you know, most of the sound quality comes from the skin, metal in the nakago, I really don't think it'll make any noticeable difference, but as long as I'm making a new one, might as well give it a try. So, drilled the hole through the nakago, Measured out the wood, measured, measured out the metal, and was sawing it with a hacksaw. This morning, I knew I should have, you know, stopped like ninety percent through, and then just kind of bent the metal until it broke. But I thought, no, I'll just keep it going. Metal broke, boom. Uh, finger hit the metal edge of the rest of the rod, and gave a nasty gash. Yes. Hopefully it'll heal soon. <clears throat> ben Allen. The thumb seems to have twisted my hand in a way that makes it easier to keep the pinky in place. Yeah. Interesting. I haven't thought of this before. Um, yeah, so really, I mean, thumb is the focus power-wise, but it does, yeah, put everything else kind of where it needs to be. This is a good thing we've uh, stumbled upon. Thank you all again for uh, participating in the Shamisen Live contest. So we're all learning something. That's good. Um, okay, that is Rachel and Ben. Uh, now I would like to address Scotty and Joel. Um, this is in a, a different thing. I mean, this is similar bachi wise. Um. Bachi wise, but in a in the different way. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so, where we just addressed with you guys, Johnny Peets, who won? Um, Rachel, uh, Mrs. Ginger Fox won. Uh, let's give her a big hand again. Um, as in, oh, as in a mad car from Carl Headland. As in, imagine you do a bocce strike on your stomach. If resting the arm on the dough, you would have to hold the bocce differently to be able to end up on the stomach with your thumb going straight through. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with that uh, sentiment slash analogy. Um, okay, so this is, <clears throat> excuse me, stop it, Kyle. Um, this is what I see not only Scott and Joel do, but also some of my students as well. Um, so, um, oh, it makes sense, Carl. What does it remind me of? Think of a door or a door hinge or so, like this motion. Um, oh, you guys have just seen this. Okay. Um, what I'm noticing is people are doing this with their thumb, as in, you know, in this door hinge, the thumb is like the top of the door, and it's going down like so. I'm not sure if this might be a misunderstanding of uh, when I say, you know, the power focus is in the thumb, um, that might encourage people to like little, literally make all their motions from the thumb uh, in this way. Let me switch to do cam. Okay. Um, so it's hard for me to oops, recreate 
entirely, but <clears throat> I'm just noticing all the motion is is or almost originating from the thumb and everything else is kind of following along with it, whether it's going down like this or swinging down or plucking. Anything is going this kind of up and down sort of thing. Um, so it's true that the bachi is, the thumb is the, the power focus, <clears throat> but it shouldn't be, it should still be the last thing that moves in a way. Like in this motion, it's not the first that swings up and everything else follows. But if everything goes up, the bachi is almost the last down. And in terms of the force, it's like in, I'm going this way, it's like in the old martial arts, or at least, you know, karate, karate, and such. They say, like, <clears throat> the power is in, like Shotokan karate, the power is in the two knuckles here. And you strike, after you make content, content, contact, you push just a little farther, like it's relax, 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 touch, and then when you touch, then the then you tighten and the power goes in. You push just a little farther. Not so, um, not like a conscious sort of effort, but that's basically the motion that should have. Relax, 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 tighten, and just yeah, through tightening, then goes in just a little bit. Same thing with the bachi. In this, the whole hand moves. Whole hand moves, not swing. Whole hand moves up, down, relax, 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 tight, or relax. You've just struck the string and the skin, and then just a little tiny bit more power. Power going down into your stomach. Not a lot, just a little. Relax, 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 oh. <laughs> relax. <clears throat> and it's in the end, when you're putting a little bit more power, that's where you really feel the focus of the thumb. In this, in all of this, you don't, or at least I don't feel I don't feel the thumb, power in the thumb or anywhere at all. It's only in the very end is when I truly feel the thumb power going in there and pressing just a little. Doing that will also help keep the Ichinoito strikes much more consistent. Relax, 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 and then just a bit more power. Tiny bit, then relax again. Very uh, split second sort of thing. Rachel missed the past 15 minutes, had work stuff. Oopsie daisy. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, congratulations, Johnny Peets, on uh, receiving your shamisen. Uh, Carl, yeah, I remember this helping me. The thumb is relaxed until it has to take care of the force coming back from the strike. It's like catching a ball 
you don't tighten up until the moment it arrives. Yeah, exactly. And I think if we all remember that, it's kind of like true in life and everything, uh, that should improve everyone's technique, I think, if they keep that in mind. Um, and again, you won't feel, you only feel the power in your thumb at the very last moment. It's kind of a, a cool feeling, too. <clears throat> if you feel your, if you feel the power in your thumb at the last moment, I think you, you'll know that you're doing it right. Because when you're doing it right, it feels good, I will say. Um, Noah, do you know who Kiki is? Of course. Um, did Carl meet them too? They came... Uh, I've met them a few times. They're nice. Very nice people. Um, okay, so that covers Scott and Joel. Um, <clears throat> also, I th and I think that covers all right-handed uh, stuff. No, there's one more. Uh, Tom, who's posted lots of um, practice videos after the lives, which has been awesome. I've always enjoyed those. Uh, and um, I had a thought with the bachi. So I noticed, um, I do believe <clears throat> Tom holds his bachi like this when he's playing, or so. The arm is off the dokake. Or so, or something like that. Um, basically, Tom, think of think of the do as like the dock, and you're you're sitting on the dock of the bay, and you know how when you're sitting down, um, okay, you know how when you're sitting down, I don't know, on the boardwalk or overlooking the water, not even the water or anything and it's far enough where you can have your feet over the edge. You know, your, your bottom is just sitting on the dock and then your legs are just down here, relaxed and able to swing, swing like this. <clears throat> that should be how uh, your arm should feel in the same way. Um, if your arm is relaxed, like shoulder, shoulders are down, Hand is at the side, like, like this. And this is something we could all do to make sure our arm is relaxed and everything. Shoulder down, hand down, raise the arm, just like so. But uh, do goes here, and then arm drops down. like so. And keep that like there. <clears throat> we put the bachi in. Still the same. More, more or less, you know, opens. And we're ready to play. <clears throat> so yeah, that's my advice to Tom and everyone else how we know our optimal place. And we, when we do that, I think we're in the right place to be able to just use one hand, I think. Like so. Uh, okay, um, Carl Hedlund, you can also Start with a little force and work yourself up if you want to feel how the thumb gradually needs to tighten up more and more at the point of impact. It's pretty cool, in my opinion. That is cool, and that's a very safe way to do it, I think. Um, yes, ideally, it's the least amount of force as possible to get that clean attack. You don't, to get that clean tataki, I mean. You don't need um, an excessive amount. And starting as little as possible and working up will get you to where you need to go better than 
using as much force as possible and going the other way, which I think many people do, especially those who break a lot of bachi. Uh, <clears throat> I remember watching this video. It was a documentary about a blind kid in uh, Japan, and they're relating it to Chikuzan Takashi. And they're saying, oh, oops. Oops, stream. Sorry, folks. I think the stream might have cut out for a little bit. Uh, not sure if I, if I got cut off. Uh, let's just take a moment. Okay, we're back. Sorry, folks. What was the last thing I just said? Uh, okay, well, I'll just start over from something. Uh, yeah, so I watched this documentary, um, Blind Kid Playing Shamisen, um, you know, in the past 10 years, I think. And because he's you know, blind and all, they were associating him with Chikuzan Takashi, uh, the famous blind uh, Tsugaru Shamisen player, kind of the father of, one of the fathers of Tsugaru, they call it, or, you know, the main, the main dudes who got the style popular. <clears throat> and I think he was in a dorm, and he they said, like, he plays practices six hours a day or so, and um, they were saying uh, how many bachi, like he breaks bachi, bekko bachi, tortoise bachi, like constantly breaking bachi and like associating that, saying like his technique is so good, or they're using that in a positive way, like he's so badass that he's breaking all these bachi. Well, I don't know. I don't, I wouldn't say that breaking your tools is a sign of good technique. I don't know, I've never broken bachi, but that doesn't mean I'm a good player, or not a good player for that matter. Um, I just found that curious in a way. Um, okay, so enough of that. Um, sorry about the internet going down, I'm not sure what happened. Um, let's see. Okay, so... Next, <clears throat> I think next we'll go into left hand technique. What have we missed out on? Okay, Ben, we got Ben, we got Tom, we got Joel Scott. Um, okay, so this will go to Joel and Jose. Um, so both of you guys are using vibrato, which looks great. Um, I like you guys to keep it. Okay, cool. I like you guys to keep to take it one step further with the vibrato. When you're doing it. Oh, um. Oh yes, Johnny, that documentary thingy, that was probably on YouTube. <clears throat> um, so, I noticed, what were you guys doing? I think you guys were doing the Ibuki thing. are doing the vibrato. I think it was... Like that. It sounded great. The feeling I got was afterwards you tightened. Like that was a moment of enough relaxation to get the vibrato uh, sliding uh, going. And that's a great feeling to have in the hand. So when you're there, just keep that feeling in the hand, that relaxed feeling, and continue, continue to have that feeling as you're playing the other strings, um, it, rather than uh, what looks to me as tightening back up. Because ideally, <clears throat> no matter what we do, we'll still be adding in a bit of vibrato by just simply by keeping your hand relaxed enough that it can wiggle. Um, and that brings a kind of a pulsing, uh, pulsing tone as it were, as we play, which is, oh, so professional and cool. So if you're at that level already, which you're getting there, 
because you're doing that vibrato with a nice relaxed hand, that will be the next step, will be to keep that feeling in the hand. And even if you don't want to use a vibrato, like... You will, your hand will still be relaxed, you just won't uh, wiggle. It doesn't tighten at all. <clears throat> oh, Carl, you're singing for so long, even though it's like 2 or 3 a.m. Uh, see, it'll be great when you uh, have your baby, I mean, if not you, uh, What's her name? I forgot her name. Your, your lady. When she has the baby, uh, I'm sure you'll be up in the middle of the night uh, taking care of things. So this, that'll be a perfect time to watch these lives as well. Anywho, <clears throat> so that's that. Um, let's see. The last person who contributed was, I believe, this morning. Yes, Ho uh, Joel, Jose, Rachel, Joel, Scott, Tom, Ben. Yes. The last person uh, contributed this morning, Sam Pepper. Um, excellent Johnny. I mean, excellent Sam. Um, he played the uh, A-class John Carter phrase, the Olsen I Kaoru one, the, something like... Or something or other. I just forgot it. Um, I have a notation right there, but I'm all wired in. Anywho, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Something like that. Um, J Sam did a great uh, rendition, <coughs> a fragment of that. Um, very fast, definitely. Uh, speed is no issue for Sam Pepper. Um, so I like to share something that could bring... It to an, an, a, a deeper level of flavor, as it were. Uh, so we don't have to worry about speed. That's okie, okie dokie. Um, the thing I would say, I'm noticing bachi wise. Let me switch to docam. Almost similar to Scott and Joel, though not quite to the same degree. <clears throat> I'm noticing it. Let's see. Actually, no, not not to the same degree as them. Um, okay, separate issue, <laughs> separate separate thing. Um, um, what I'd like to hear. Maybe you can do it again for the next contest. Is when you're doing your uh, squee, your upstroke, I would like to hear it more percussive. Maybe that can be a matter of tilting your bachi a bit more parallel and then pulling up with your whole arm until you hear that. It's currently, I'm hearing the downstroke sounds the same as the upstroke, which is good, which is what you want to go for. Um, but both is rather light. If you can, as a, possibly as a sacrifice to speed, slowing it down if you have to a bit, put the tip of the bachi in more or basically dig in. Let's just say dig in. To where you can have a nice inside thwack. And that'll add much more depth to this phrase. Do it. Um. <clears throat> 
especially on this edge of, in the uh, Maibachi port, part, four bachi here, everything is in a mute, kind of muted or quieter that um, we want to still have flavor and dynamics and such. So by adding that kind of percussion is a great way to bring flavor even when we're playing quietly. Is that um, personal cam? Um, okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So next, I was <laughs> doing a couple times. I rewatched the um, entries, and well, long story short, it's, it's cycling through them all on Facebook. Just scroll, scroll, scroll. It's, takes a long time to do, longer than the actual videos. Uh, so next time, next time we do our live contest, um, let's add in like the hash, hashtag uh, Shamisen Live. Yeah, Shamisen Live. And then that'll be a way we can easily click and view them all. So let's do that. Um, okay. Skui is the hardest <clears throat> thing for me. Oh, Sam Pepper. Hey, Sam. Uh, Skui is the hardest thing for me. I keep missing it. Yeah. Um, gosh. Um. Yeah, as Carl there says, um, it's kind of like a... Um, if you're watching it, a video and you're rewinding or going fast forwarding, rewinding, it'll be the same motion going down, going up like this. Okay. Fast forward. Uh, rewind. Theoretically, it should be the same. slip off Sam Pepper it's hard because I slip off I slip and often even miss the upstroke completely when playing fast ah yes um, that is a matter of practice but also think of uh, your index finger as being uh, fulcrum I guess not really I'm not sure that's the right word um, Partially use your use your index finger as support when pulling up, because you will feel the tug. But if your hand is set upright <clears throat> on the bachi, it won't be enough to like fully. Um, you know, the string won't be able to pry the bachi out of your hand. It just has to be um, you know, the the right angle or. The bachi hand here being the right angle, angle, here being the right angle, here being right, thumb being in the right area, and then this having the swing. If these, of all these factors is in the right combination, you should be able to get a percussive uh, skui <coughs> with no problems. Or very little, at least. So, basically, if you're having trouble with it, experiment. Move your, <clears throat> move your hand up, down, change this angle, change this angle, such and such, and eventually it'll click in. Um, just keep experimenting. Just like with throat singing. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Maybe I'm just playing too fast for my skill level, Sam Pepper says. Um, I noticed that with a lot of players, not only shamisen, but that's a, you know, Tsugaru, people who are going into Tsugaru, 
the most notable noticeable part is the speed that many are attracted to. Um, and same with bluegrass too, I find. <clears throat> you know, players, it's about playing fast as possible, whatever. But more important, I think, in the music in Tsugaru or bluegrass or whatnot is having you know, the beef, as I would call it, the, uh, you know, digging in, having the substance there. And yeah, basically just speed doesn't really matter if you're playing, if you're technique or your plane has substance as beef then it'll sound great no matter what speed what your speed <clears throat> sometimes i find that the at least bluegrass players they'll use speed as a way to compensate for lack of a beef but it just doesn't really work uh, let's see i noticed i remember hearing about a player in the Hirosaki, the Taikai, the tournament in Japan. I think Kevin and Mike and Grant were there uh, when it happened. A guy competed, and he just did the most basic uh, rokudan. Just... <laughs> and he thought it was so simple, and he thought he would lose, um, because everyone else was just you know flying off the walls with their little fancy wingdings and such. So he left the tournament. He just called it a day. And turns out he won first place. So they're calling him out for his award and he wasn't there. Uh, so, yeah. Just, he just had the beef. Now there is the subject about uh, the Taikai being slightly rigged. But that might be a subject I'll get into with uh, Mike Penny in our new upcoming podcast at some point. Maybe next month. So get to that. Um, <laughs> okay, Carl, let's keep politics out of this. <clears throat> okay, uh, three minutes left. Um, yeah, so let's see. Um, hopefully we all learned a lot. Going forward, now this is something, uh, an idea really from Carl Hedlund about um, what I want to go th for now is bringing flavor into our shamisen. So a lot of players, all of us, um, I mean, the shamisen is so such a simple instrument. We can easily learn melodies. So we'll like learn sakura sakura. And once we've memorized a melody, we'll play another song. Dingo bushi, yasaburo bushi, uh, kokiri kobushi, hanaga sondo. And the, it, the list goes on. Um, and that's a great thing to do, build up that repertoire like a vocabulary. Um, but then, you know, we kind of think, uh, you know, we'll, we'll run out of songs and we think, oh, I want to learn a new song. What's there left? However, they're learning the melody is only maybe one half of the shamisen experience for that song. There is so much flavor we can add, you know, using pause, changing our dynamic and such that can really turn this melody into a real story, like singing with the instrument. Um, and that's something I haven't addressed much and I don't think many people do. Um, it's a great thing to be aware of. So um, yeah, the three, the, the secrets of the flea, three flavored strings. That's a be a good name for the podcast actually. Um, so going forward, I wanna, I'm planning to take phrases of certain songs like Kokiri Kobushi and whatnot. Um, something short that we can all play and show you where ele show you places where we can add more flavor. And that will that really brings life into the songs, I think. So that'll be fun. Um, probably uh, Carl, I cannot look at your puns. Um, <clears throat> um, damn it, I'm so distracted. What was my point? Oh, yes. So, we'll be getting into that on Thursday. And then on Thursday as well, we should be able to start, and I'll announce the next uh, Shamisen live contest. So, that'll be fun. Um, alrighty. Thank you all for joining. Uh, Rachel, I'll get this out to you probably tomorrow or Thursday, actually, sometime this week. 
Uh, let me know your address on the Facebooks or something. Um, let's see. Joe Schofield once said, it's better to take only a few songs a year and really learn them, like two, three songs if you only have a little time. Uh, yeah, that that's true. Um, <clears throat> I think actually one thing I'll quickly say is um, in the in the beginning, I mean, I th we get more we can appreciate re technique refinement and drills and so on. I think um, more as we get more skills. And only speaking from personal experience, because in the beginning, I too just wanted to learn songs and more songs, and only later on, like now, uh, appreciating the benefit of the drills. So, you know, there, there is a time and place for everything. Um, in a way, kind of, you, you're only, uh, you can only really learn what you're already ready to learn inside. For example, like in doing the martial arts, I've been for like a year or two, the instructors kept saying about hip vibration, where when you uh, strike or do a punch, your hips will kind of cock or will push out in an instant, out and then back, forward and then back, which is like a vibration. And they say hip vibration, hip vibration, hip vibration. And I would do it to the best of my abilities. And um, But in a way, even if I did the motions it was it wasn't until a year or two later when my body was kind of ready in the right place it had its foundation where i could actually take in this new technique and such um, and so yeah that's just a matter of time um, no matter what order you fill in dots you'll get your picture eventually uh, that might not be the right uh, word that might be, not be the right analogy or whatnot. Uh, we'll all get good in the end. That's the best thing. Okay, <clears throat> what did I miss? Oh, yes, right, uh, Ginger Fox, I do have your address. I'm pack case address. I'll use that. Um, oh, Carl, what are we going to do with you? Uh, okay, uh, thank you all again. Have a good night. Those who are ready to sleep, have a good day. Those who are not ready to sleep. Or if you're ready to sleep, have a good day anyway. Sweet dreams. Good days. See you on Thursday, I hope. Or next week, Tuesday. Have a good one. Now, how do we turn this off?